Hello, and welcome to another PFF short. We're going to be discussing Malik McDowell, the defensive lineman from Michigan State. I am one of your hosts, uh, Jordan Plocker, and I'm here with John Breitenbach. And we are going to be, as I said, mentioning Malik McDowell, what we like about him, what we don't like about him, uh, player call, things like that. Again, just starting off with the player, long, rangy type of uh, player who can play on the edge of a defensive line, but he's also a player who can play on the interior of a defensive line. He's done both at Michigan State. One key stat to know, McDowell has 30 total quarterback pressures on only 206 pass rush snaps last year in 2016. So he's pretty productive as a pass rusher. Uh, I know that, John, you want to talk about some other things that you thought that McDowell does well. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned a couple of them there, long and, and rangy and, and just really athletic uh, from my perspective. A few teams tried to run read option to his side. He can cut out one half of the field if you don't put a hat on him. He's got the ability to close down the line to, to take out the running back or get back to the outside to deal with the quarterback. Those kinds of of athletes are are really uh, useful, obviously, in the NFL. His change of direction ability, the agility is very clear to see. And especially when he is lined up on the edge, you mentioned that he was moved around extensively at Michigan State, and he really does have that ability to isolate a tackle on the perimeter. He's also able to use power moves. He's a guy who can win with a bull rush using just a single arm which is kind of a rare a rare skill and offers you a lot of flexibility then as a pass rusher but then also inside you line him up over the nose nose tackle his explosion off the ball is just too much to for that center to be able to to react having snapped the ball to to be able to to pass protect against him he really fires into the backfield and generates a ton of splash plays behind the line of scrimmage I know, however, that uh, you're not quite as high on him as I am, Jordan. Well, you know, there's projections, you know, all around of, you know, if he's an inside guy or if he's an outside guy. You know, and he, he, like he, like you said, he did make some really nice splash plays inside. And I know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of good evaluators who think that he would be, you know, a good fit inside. Um, I personally think he's a better fit on the outside, you know, for some of the reasons that you mentioned. I love his his athleticism and his range and his ability to really sort of impact plays on the outside of the field. And, you know, he can really limit what teams can do out there. Uh, when he was inside, and these are some of my concerns about him, uh, he didn't seem to, to shed blocks as well when he was inside as when he was outside. I mean, outside, like you mentioned, he's able to really use, uh, you know, his pass rush moves against tackles. Tight ends really struggle to block him. Inside, I thought uh, a lot of his plays – he sort of seemed to be uh, freelancing a bit at times, you know, and, and, you know, we always see, you know, you know, we don't necessarily know the play call, but there's times where, you know, a, a gap was clearly looked like it got missed there, uh, you know, and, and it looked like he was probably the culprit. Um, so, again, it, he seemed like he was maybe a bit more freelancing inside, uh, not so much outside. And then also you mentioned he has that long arm stab pass rush move that he uses, and I think that's his most effective move. And he does have counters off of it. So, I, again, I think that he'd be better outside where he can use that and then use his counters off of it than he than he is inside, where I think, again, sometimes he sort of wins um, by sort of freelancing and just, like, going off script and making plays. Uh, so, again, talented, but, again, I like him better outside than inside. And, and, and then that way he kind of reminds me of uh, Rashid Hageman when he came out of Minnesota uh, similar build uh, in long guys, long arms, and also guys who can play defensive tackle and defensive end, uh, but also guys who had similar issues of not necessarily keeping their pad level low uh, and, and not necessarily playing with the, the, the intensity that you want necessarily every snap. So that way, I mean, in, in some ways, he sort of reminded me of, of Hagem in, in that capacity. You know, how do you see him fitting, you know, in the NFL just to sort of wrap this up, John? I think I agree with you. I think I see him as being better outside. We did. He is a finesse player. There's no doubt about that. And with prospects like him, I think we often see that their their strengths also act as their as their biggest weaknesses in some regards. So because he fires off the ball so quickly, if he's not winning 
at the line of scrimmage, then he finds himself frequently washed entirely out of plays. There have been a couple of concerns, perhaps, about some effort in some instances. Double teams prove prove a huge problem for him, so I don't see it as likely that he could sustain uh, playing playing nose tackle in the NFL. I think you're right. I think he looks like a guy who's going to be better impacting plays from the edge. But then if you look at his measurables relative to some of the top prospects that have come out on the edge, they don't, they don't quite stack up. Yeah, I just, uh, again... It's kind of a tweener player of, you know, sort of built to play both. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of where he, you know, uh, you know, some teams might have, you know, different ideas about him. You know, some teams might view him as inside, some teams might view him as outside. It seems like you and I both agree that he's a little bit better suited to the outside. Um, with some of those concerns, I mean, the athleticism and, and, you know, explosion is there for him to be a, a, a round one guy, and some teams might view him that way. But, I mean, I personally would be a bit more comfortable – uh, with a, with like a second day pick on on McDowell, how do you feel about that, John? I think players with his physical kind of makeup and skill set are always likely to go on day one. There are some technique issues, but in terms of the athleticism and obviously the frame as well, I see there being little chance that he does make it out of those those picks towards the end of round one, and even perhaps towards the middle of the first round. I believe he's around 20th on our big board at the moment. You can find all our player rankings uh, in our new PFF draft pass. We definitely recommend checking that out. You can use a, uh, you, you get a PDF version and an online version. Uh, there's some great charts on there, spider charts, passing charts, rankings, as we said, unique stats. Um, and they make for good reading uh, for Malik McDowell, so I would recommend checking those out if you do decide to invest. Uh, thanks for joining us on this podcast short. Uh, I've been John Breitenbach, and Jordan Plocker has been joining me today. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>